Greetings. It's Tuesday, the 19th. Uncle Joey here, ready for Freddy. The check-in is brought to you by Liquid IV. I know you savages are out there partying like unbelievable. When you need to recover fast, turn to Liquid IV. Listen, you're jumping up and down. It's Christmas. You're drinking eggnog with Taminka juice in it. You got this. You got this. You need to stay hydrated. Liquid IV gets you hydrated two times faster than water alone, and it even comes in a sugar-free. Let me tell you something. They launched three new flavors, the white peach, tremendous, the green grape out of this world, the lemon lime, it's like Gatorade and heat, and all three of them will set you on fire after a long night of jumping up and down and doing other things. You know what I'm saying? I've been there, but I'm not there anymore. Now I drink liquid IV keeps me alive in the morning. You understand me? After a cup of coffee, I drink a little liquid IV, a white peach. I put that thing in it to help me out, and boom, no gluten, soy, dairy, or GMOs, and no artificial sweeteners either. I don't even know what GMOs are. Sugar is replaced with an amino acid allulose blend, which has the same taste and texture of table sugar. It's tremendous. Try the white peach. It'll put you in a different dimension. You understand me? Grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier in bulk nationwide at Costco. Tremendous. They got a bunch of flavors. They even got combo packs now. So you can try a bunch of different combo packs or get 20% off when you go direct to liquidiv.com. Use code Joey. Listen, Uncle Joey is going to save you 20%. Start the 2024 with liquid IV. You're going to love it. I'm going to give you 20% off anything you order. When you shop for better hydration today, using promo code Joey, J-O-E-Y, at liquidiv.com. That's liquidiv.com. The check-in is also brought to you by dun, da, 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 Factor. Listen, if you're trying to eat better in 2024, make it easy on yourself with Factor. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service that sends chef-prepared, dietitian approved meals right to your door. They take two minutes to prepare, to prepare. You just heat them up in the microwave on a skillet, and you're all set, tip-top magoo. No waiting in line at the grocery store, no chopping, prepping, or cleaning up, just an awesome meal right there when you want them. The thing I like about this most is, listen, half of us are on the go. We're trying to eat healthy. This is where Factor comes in. They got 35 meal options to choose from every week, so you'll have much more variety. They come vegan, vegetarian, protein plus, calorie smart meals, and you'll never skimp on flavor. Right now, head to factormeals.com slash Diaz50. That's Diaz50. Go to factormeals.com and press in code Diaz50. You ready for this? I'm going to get you 50% off. Who's better than Factor Meals? Nobody. That's Diaz50 at factormeals.com slash Diaz50 to get your 50% off. All right. Let's get this party started. Turn off your TVs. Run for your lives. It's over. They didn't put you on this planet just to give up. If Uncle Joey could do it, I could f***ing rule the world. That's what you got to be thinking. Welcome back to show. <laughs> The lighting looks different. It looks like a greenish and a blue today. You know how we do it, Doug. We're trying to diversify over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> how was your day, Tarzan? It was fine. You know, I'm fucking... It's a big difference. Like, you talked about... You would talk about going from, you know, being on the road to being at the store and the stuff dying. For me, it's... I'm having the most fun the weekend like it's it couldn't be more fun doing two shows a night and then i go back to like day job on monday like ooh, it's it's very different very so fucking different. yeah you're doing comedy the whole time you're thinking about quitting your fuck you're like why am i gonna go back on monday it's the it's like a surreal world that you live in when you're like a, in between because you can't really quit your day job to mc 
Right. You know? So, but once you start featuring, you got to shit or get off the fucking pot. Yeah. And you have to decide about the job. And that's when you look at your budget. You look at what's coming in, what you're expected to come in, what's in your bank account. You know, do I need a fucking Corvette? Not really. I just need a Nissan. I could sell down. You know, when I started com, like when I got serious about comedy, I, I, I had nothing. I was coming off a divorce. I was, I was basically fucking living from day to day. But I knew that, like, I had to have my apartment went from like nine eighty to four hundred dollars. Like everything got cut. You know, the phone you don't need it. A cable TV you don't need it. When you're doing comedy, you just don't need these things. And that's what forces you. It's like to get good at comedy for like two or three years to get into the rhythm, you have to force yourself. It's like a prison. You go to work, you go home, you eat, you write, you go to the gym, then you go do two open mics, and then you go home. And then on the weekends, you know, you fucking work till Friday, and then you, and it's hard. It's fucking hard, man. It's hard to balance both. And at one point, you're going to bust. And one day, you just walk out of the office. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. It's just, and it's not like I actually, my day job is not bad, but it's especially weekends that where stuff goes well and like the shows are fun. And then, like, you know, being, I've always, the, the, the road has, is always like so romantic to me. Like just the idea of like being in a hotel. In a city like I've never been to, it's just it, like it, I don't. <clears throat> it just sounds awesome. So it just like it, the entire thing is fun. Like I, to me, that was the allure of it. I like to yeah. travel. I like the. But it was weird going back into like for me. I have to remember, I took a job and I was selling cars, and he, he took the, he made the job flexible enough, you know, and it was working. I wasn't. I wasn't becoming rich, but as I, I was at least, you know, keeping the lights on. But then things would happen to tell me this isn't what I'm going to do anymore. Like I get a sign from God or whoever the fuck it was, <laughs> the comedy gods. Like, I, you know, I would always have like the last two salesman jobs I had, the cars blew up. You know, like when you were driving them? Yeah, like I went to do comedy and I kept a job and they would give me a car to drive. And one time I just left the car. One time I got stuck in a brand spanking new and it was for Bert's manager, Judy Brown, Bert, Sebastian's manager. Right. She had a gig like at a, a ski resort. And it didn't have a hotel. The feature in the headline had a hotel, but I didn't get a hotel. So I basically drove up there for the small... 30, whatever the fuck it is. And uh, my fucking, at the end of the show, I was having a good time. And I got in my car. It was one of those brand new Jeeps. Like, uh, it was, a, I mean, brand spanking new. It had to be 94 Jeep. And the fucking timing belt or something blew out on it. Jesus. That, I, I, I asked, I was talking to Josh about that this weekend. About, like, if like, your car breaks down on the way to like it just I get anxiety about stuff like that now. I'm gonna get into an accident. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, uh, you know. And then one night was the time I told you I went up to like Wyoming and the guy had to leave because his wife was cheating on him. And on the way back, the car started going on fire. The car just lit itself on fire, dog, on the road. It was fucking snowing. We had to walk like a mile in the snow with our little bags, overnight bags. I never heard from those people again. Like that car just blew up on I-70 somewhere. And I never heard from those people again. It was just, it was, and I and I would go home and go, I wouldn't even be upset. I just knew it was a sign telling me to go for it. And I wouldn't go for it. I was such a fucking pussy. Like I always wanted that. Well, I had child support. I had, a, you know, I had a bunch of fucking things. I had an addiction. I had child support. It wasn't like I was putting it into my house, like painting the room or nothing. I had an apartment. I never turned the stove on. I ate all my three meals out. And I snorted Coke and I fucking paid child support. That's what I was going to ask. Like, because you're a very organized person. I can imagine you writing a budget with 
coke in? Did you ever like budget coke into your like expenses? In those days, hell yeah. I had a monthly, <laughs> I had a monthly stipend for it. Because why lie to yourself? Right. I wasn't going to lie to myself. I was putting away like anywhere from 150 to 300 a week in those days. And I was broke. And I was fucking broke. Just, you know, selling Coke, selling a, an ounce of weed. I'm just putting it all together while I'm doing comedy. Bro, in the beginning in L.A., I think till 2002 in L.A., I was doing creepy shit, you know. And out here, I was at the comedy store. I was selling pounds of weed to agents and, you know. So you got to do what you got to do, especially like even back then, it probably wasn't a lot of money, but features make at most usually, unless the headliner is very nice, like a hundred bucks a show. Yeah. So if you got five shows and no hotel as a feature, which is the status quo now, right? Yeah. They don't want a fucking hotel now, you know, it's, it's, you break even. So you need another job. It's, uh, it, it's very scary to think about doing it. So, but like that's because I've been thinking about you. I think about like the stuff we talked about on the church a lot and something, I forget who it was. I also, I was listening to another podcast and the podcaster was talking, a comic was talking about like do, doing a vision board on like New Year's Eve. So like I've been trying, I've been working on something like that, like a plan and a, like, do you believe in any of that stuff or not really? Because like, you take a plan very seriously. I know that. Of what? Like, uh, I'm sorry. I like just got, this is my doctor. Oh, no, that's okay. And I couldn't, the, the, the message wouldn't come up on my fucking phone. And I knew he was going to hit me back. So, but anyway, I'm very sorry. A vision board. No, just, just like a plan for like the next year. So like Always. I have a plan. You have to have a yearly plan, a six month plan and a three month plan. And a 30-day plan. And that was me. You know, that was what I did. You know, uh, people, I just saw Sebastian the other day on a podcast talking about how he never wrote his goals down. And he's one of the biggest stars in comedy. So who the fuck gives a fuck what I think? What I'm saying is everybody's different. Everybody reacts to different things. I wanted to see my efforts I wanted to make sure that 15 sets were done. Like, you could do whatever you want, Joey. You could do whatever you want. You could snort coke. You could stay out. But you got to give me 15 sets a month. And then it, the numbers became higher and higher. And then it got to 30, 35 sets a month, you know? Yeah. And I think I'm sure like, I, I don't do it. And I'm sure there's a lot of comics who don't do it. But. If it, it obviously worked for you. So that's why like, I'm trying. That's why I like listening to comedians podcasts. Cause I, I, I try to get little things of what they do. And especially the ones who have successful podcasts are doing something. You, right. You sat there with me for years, right. listening to other comics, fears, their goals, how they did certain things, whether it was writing, every comic brought something different to the table. Every musician that we had brought something different to the table. I got to be honest with you. The guy I learned the most from in all the years of podcasting was Rudy Sarzo. And I still confer with Rudy for big decisions. How is Rudy? Because huh? Rudy's fucking How's... great. I talk to Rudy once a week, though. That's, and that's my brother. And, uh, I, that's great. And he's still, I see, I see him on Instagram and Twitter all the time. So what is... I'm sorry for interrupting. What was he? Why do you take so much from him? Rudy gave us something on every episode. And whether people took it or not, I loved when people would hit me up and go, why do you put Rudy on there for? And I, I didn't give a fuck. Rudy always has a place to speak with me because he's not just a bass player. He's an artist and he's got 50 years in. So whatever stupid story you got, don't match up to him. You know, he woke up on a bus one day, a plane went down, it was his fucking best friend, you know, on a fucking tour. What do you do on a Saturday night? Whatever. I don't know if it was a Saturday when he died, Randy Rhodes. But not to, he taught me the, the most important thing I ever learned from anybody in comedy 
he taught me the words labor of love. In one and way, that, changed, that changed my whole career. That changed everything for me when I heard those words and days later when it sank in. What we do is a labor of love. They pay us for traveling. They pay us to have to deal with fucking people talking to you in your ear. (laughs) I want to go to Monaco with you, whatever the fuck they're saying. That's what you're getting paid for. When you're performing, whether it's a violin, whether it's a harmonica, whether it's comedy, whether it's spoken word, it's a labor of love. You're giving yourself away, a piece of yourself away. If you're not doing it for the labor of love, go fucking do something different. Go do something different. And that's how my life was when I first got into comedy. It was all a labor of love. I didn't give a fuck about what you were paying me. Oh, you're going to pay me 50 bucks? Perfect. I can eat that, <laughs> you know? And and then it became something else. And then it became a financial. And then I didn't like it anymore. Because that's why I enjoyed the book signing so much. There was no money. They had to buy a book for 20 bucks. You know, they're going to get it anyway on Audible or whatever. I didn't want to charge you to take a picture or to fucking shake my hand. You know, I didn't want to charge you 20 bucks to the book signing. I wanted to be there. And if you noticed, I was on time to all of them. I brought joints for everybody on all of them. I wanted, that was a labor of love for me. There was no money involved. Listen, I'm I'm not in the mood of taking a microphone tonight. And I'm not in the mood to answer questions, but I got two or three minutes for you. I wanted to talk to them because when I did stand up, it was just a stupid fucking picture. That's not really a contact point. I learned a lot from those fucking book signings. I learned a lot about myself. Now I got to see if it goes over to other things. What did you learn about yourself with the book signing? That I really love people again. And that doing stand-up and that higher level pushed me away from these people. That That's not what I ever wanted to do. That's why I didn't. I never saw myself in a, an arena or a stadium. I never saw those things. One of, the, one of the greatest memories I remember hearing is that Gabriel did like three shows on Christmas night, Christmas Eve at the, at the John Lovett's Comedy Club. And I heard that the last show, he took them all to fucking pancakes. He took them all to fucking uh, Denny's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard the story. Yeah. You know, that's something that fucking lasts forever. That's something that I wish, you know. And every time I had an opportunity to do it, like during the pandemic, it, it fell apart on me, whether it was getting a movie theater to show the fucking Many Saints in Newark, the Patreon people, which I'm happy, you know, now looking back. (laughs) (laughs) But it taught me that again. That's why I just, I didn't want, like when I did that last show in New York in January with you. Right. I knew I didn't want to get on stage a long time. I knew it that night. Like I'm fucking getting out of here. And it wasn't a Sony Hall. I love Sony Hall. I love it. It was it was, I just did not want to do it anymore. And until I fall in love with it again, I won't, I'm not, I love doing this thing with you on Monday nights. It's no pressure. I don't give a fuck if we're on the Apple top 100. I don't care if iTunes don't like it. I don't give a fuck if YouTube don't like it. Guess what? The only one that's got to like it is us. So in my world, that's called a labor of fucking love. If I'm out here taking pictures all day and making videos <laughs> to watch the podcast, that's one thing. I enjoy doing the DraftKings things. I really do doing the videos. You know, I like doing stupid fucking video, whatever. I'm limited with those. And that's it. that doesn't make me happy. But back to the what we were talking about, Rudy taught me, you know, I learned from Ralphie on there. I learned from Theo Vaughn on there. I got a bunch of lessons from those things. When you looked at people and you're like, really, you did that? That was very interesting to me back then. You know, when we were doing the podcast 2015, 16, it was really great. You know, it was a fucking bad for me and you because we were destroying our bodies. 
we had fun. I mean, we had a blast, but it's yeah, it's just the knowledge. I, that, that's one one of the reasons I love podcasts. It was a labor of love. We were doing it with no rule book. We were, <laughs> that's why for you to look at a podcast now, that somebody did take for you to look at a podcast of somebody who had the balls to do a podcast 13, 12, 10 years ago and say, well, on that podcast, you said something wrong. I want you to remember one thing. There was no rule book. There was no rule book on YouTube. There was no fucking rule book. So, and it, and it's something that, that I think gets talked about a lot. And it's, it's the people who came to watch didn't have a, like it, it's, People might look back at it who weren't church fans or that it wasn't for them and they might get upset. But it's not like it's not like we got a bunch of hate back then. No, there was no rules. Right. Acid church. Nobody nobody takes a head of acid and does a fucking podcast for four hours. All right. On a Sunday night with fucking people calling in and Duncan sending pictures of dirty people and you know, no there was no rules. And it yeah. It was a labor of love. I think for like a year, I was getting robbed on the ads because I didn't know how to read the ads. So I would just read them every show and they were only paying me for one read. Uh, and they're like, your sponsors love you. Yeah, because I read them every fucking show for free. It was like a year. I didn't know what I was doing. I was a fucking idiot. But That's crazy. It was a labor of love. It gave us a window like now to just connect, fuck around. And if you're in, you're in. If you're not, take a chance. Columbus did. Take a fucking shuttle. I was thinking about about that time today because it. Would, I don't remember the exact day. I don't know if you. I wonder if you do. But it's around now that you recorded. It's either you or the priest. It's right. It was right before Christmas. Yeah, right. We released it in January. Yeah, because yeah, I remember the ten years ago, eleven. Yeah, uh, it might even be more than that. Might yeah, have been twenty twelve. It's about yeah. You know what I was thinking about before I was watching the fucking news before. This afternoon it was raining terribly. I made a video of me and Gray eating a piece of cat a uh, pizza. I saw that. Dog, she tears pizza fucking up. First off, Gray tears anything up. The only thing Gray really don't like is shrimp, and she's a fucking cat, and yeah, she's that not. Make sense. She doesn't like all the fishes. But Gray will eat pork fried rice. Gray will eat fucking <laughs> Szechuan beef. Gray will eat fucking cheeseburgers. If you leave Gray alone for two minutes and walk away from your dish, she will jump on that table and at least try your shit. And you got, I get mad at her, but I don't. You know? do, you, do you do you put it like on a separate plate for her, or you or you just know that she's gonna go after your? I, first of all, I know she likes salami. Right. She loves prosciutto. <laughs> she loves wet moots. Like, you know, she loves fucking ham. Won't eat cheese. But Boar's Head Deluxe Ham, she will tear that up to shreds, okay? And I love her to death. But that cat eats everything. Remember, I picked that cat up on the streets. And she wasn't feral. She was half feral. And fucking, you know, she was living in somebody's house, but they got dogs and she couldn't go back into the house. So she had to live outside. When I met that cat, that cat was about three. And I was amazed that that's the longevity of a cat who lives outside is three years. I befriended her outside in the street. She walked me home and I played with her outside and I had treats for my cats. So I brought them down for her. And one day she just scratched the fucking door and my cats went crazy. And, you know, the neighbor, the owner of the cat told me, she goes, I got to be honest with you. You should just take her because she's your fucking cat. You're her dad. I could see it. She fucking follows you. And we brought her even back here. I mean, she's been with us now for, yeah, 11 years. But the last two years, she's really come out of her fucking shell. That's great. So, when I wake up, she follows me down here, and she jumps on my lap while I'm on the computer. Well, you had to keep her separated, right? Like you had to keep her like in your room or something. No, like she wasn't. She didn't like anybody else. When we first got her, 
she was like, fuck you bitches. I don't like you motherfuckers at all. Okay. <laughs> and she lived in a house with like seven cats that fucking hate her. And she would walk to the kitchen in front of them and they would go like, what the fuck is that? Look at it. She would walk real timid and eat her food and then walk right back to a little hiding spot, always facing them so they couldn't attack her from the back. She always <laughs> laid against the wall. She was very smart. And she got into a couple beefs with like two of the cats. The girls fucking hated her. There was one, there was one girl I had that I gotta tell you, it broke her heart. She didn't last long after that. She did not like her in the house. Just the fact that she was there, she didn't like it. Nope. Wow. Did not fucking like it. But ever since we moved to Jersey, when we first moved, me and her got into a beef one day, and we didn't fucking hang out for like three months. Over what? How do you get into a beef with a cat? I don't know. I went upstairs one day. <laughs> I laid on the bed. And she didn't like it or something. And she scratched me. So I pushed her away. And then she bit my finger. Something. It was something like, what the fuck, Brad? Well, we had just moved here. She was in shell shock. She was like a Vietnam vet. So, <laughs> you know, she's sleeping on my bed. I can't see at night. I got no fucking carrots. I walked back to the bed. To, and I think it's my sleep apnea machine. So when I put my hand out, I, I pushed her. And she fucking swatted at me. And I'm like, great, what the fuck? And then, so we didn't talk for like three or four months. <laughs> then fucking, it took me a year to get back on the good graces. But I I got farther with her in that year than I did in like eight or nine years. Wow. So she sleeps with me. She sleeps in between me and my wife. You know, she fucking, once we go to breakfast, once I get coffee in the morning, she sleeps on top of the heater for a few hours. And once I come to the office, she comes right down here and she's by my feet meowing, purring, and then I'll leave for the day. And now she actually waits for me by the garage. And if I smoke dope in the garage, she follows me outside to the garage. It's a trip. That's awesome. That's crazy. It's a trip, man. Especially so many years. So you guys were eating pizza and watching the news, you were saying. So I came home today. I had to go to the doctor at 10. I went to the gym for a little while. And I had like a half hour break and I was sitting down here and my wife came down with two slices of pizza. And she goes, did you eat lunch when you were out? And I go, no, I'll take a slice. I mean, I'm not, I don't feel like going to a restaurant or anything, but I did see something. When I went upstairs to go to the bathroom, the pizza case was upside down by the door. We were going to take it out, whoever goes out next, take the garbage out. And she was already sniffing at the pizza box. So she knew it was, she's mm. fucking smart, man. So as soon as my wife came down, she came down after my wife. My wife goes, go to the back. I have to go upstairs and get, get something to drink. In that time, she jumped on the fucking chair with me and just started chomping. I'm, there was a pizza cheese sticking out of the side. And, you know, crispy pizza in fucking Old Bridge is back. They opened up after the fire. I didn't know. I went up to jujitsu last week, and I saw the sign. So when I went Sunday on the way back, I called my wife and there were some kids here. And I go, you know what? I'll bring a pie for them. I didn't even eat the pizza. But when I opened it up, it was cheesy. Nice. Like it was just an extra cheese pie, crispy to the max, like only they could do. And fucking, uh, I didn't eat that day. So my wife brought down the slice. I go, give me a slice. I didn't eat that whole slice. Mercy, attack. Fucking Gray ate the whole slice. I didn't give a half the fucking cheese. I got like the crust and a little bit of the middle. That's fucked up. She eats that much. And then she eats a can of cat food. She eats a can of cat food at night, and she'll follow me around throughout the goddamn day. The cats are interesting. Animal, listen, animals are interesting. I'm thinking of getting a dog next. If you look at what you do when you turn 60, what to do when you turn 60, to pay to get a dog. That's awesome. Another German Shepherd? Yeah, but then I got to walk it. I got to Figure out my leg situation and my knee situation. I don't want to walk a German Shepherd on fucking roller skates or a skateboard. Or I got to tie him to my fucking stroller like a fat fucking old fuck. And he pushes me like mush. You know, I don't need that either. What are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? I want to know the people who donated to Black Lives Matter. Why? Because I need a big, I need a big envelope. I don't want to work no more. 
<laughs> you, you, we could start you a GoFundMe. No, I don't want to GoFundMe. Why? I like Cuban lives matter. Yeah, but how are you support? gonna get the word out? So if any, if I can't get the word out, you ain't gonna get it out. You know what I'm saying? I got connections. I can spread the word. We'll buy wraps and a little boat for Cuban people <laughs> and bring them here and give them more dignity. But I'm not looking to bring buy wraps. I'm looking to fucking score 10 million first. Then I'll buy a wrap. They get a wrap. I knock down my 10 million. Because I was thinking about me and my wife were talking about. Look at all those people who donate to Black Lives Matter. Those people just broke off, bought houses, and really didn't do anything with the money. In my world, it, it seemed like it was a total scam. And it was, I, I, I did see that like, there were some people who fucked off with the money. Oh, please. They always do. Even when the Hurricane Katrina, that man is doing 10 to 20 in <laughs> Rock, Arkansas right now. He's doing fucking, he's, he's helping the Girl Scout make cookies. Oh, 10 to 20. So, so that, so that's your, your new plan? Cuban Lives <laughs> Matter? What's that? Cuban Lives Matter? Sure. Why not? Everybody should do it. I'm going to get like a Chinese guy. I'm going to find the guy from Portugal. I'm going to find a couple fucking Zambia. Everybody matters. Now send the check, cocksuckers. No guilt on their face. That's what you, it was a perfect scam. They bounced off in guilt. I guarantee 90% of the people who donated to that were white Americans. And like 50 had money and they felt guilty. My grandfather owned a slave. Cut a check. Now the guilt is over. Instead of going out and shaking one's hand and inviting them over to your house. See what I'm saying? Cutting a check is the easiest thing. So they made millions of dollars, billions of dollars. <clears throat> well, not billions, maybe 500 million, maybe. And you only want 10. What? And you only want 10. That's not really not that much. Don't. I'm, I'm not greedy. You know me. I just want to fucking go to jujitsu and eat Chinese food until they put me in the casket. That sounds like a good fucking life. What do I give a fuck? Fucking rain like a motherfucker here yesterday. I know it's raining up there. Yeah, it's not fucking people lost their power. Not me. I got a generator. I didn't fuck around when I moved here. That's the first thing they told me when I moved here. Get a generator, dog. Power goes out. When I moved in this house, the power had just been back for three days. And what is it like gas? Do you have to go to the gas station and like fill it up? How does it work? You see my wife around here somewhere? I don't know what the no, it's not gasoline, it's electric because it's in the fucking in the board. I love. I, wait, it can't be an electric one unless it charges. Because if the power goes out, how's it going to work? It recharges every Wednesday by itself. It turns off the power. Oh. The house turns off, and the charger takes it over. It's fucking tremendous. That's badass. Yeah, the, the realtor told us. Jimmy Florentine told me. They're like, before you buy that house, make sure you got enough money left over for a fucking uh, a generator. I'm happy I did. But okay. that's it. Well, you know what's fucking crazy? A week, right now, when we're watching this podcast next Tuesday. That's it. Christmas will be over. You motherfuckers will be out with your little cash card, spending money, going to comedy shows, walking around New York City, dying to get mugged. You know, because next week is big in New York City. From Tuesday on, straight till fucking Monday, people will be banging in the city for New Year's, going to look at shit. Wait, uh, like it's a good time to rob someone? Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't know. What what, what what am I, criminal fucking... Uh, well, back a, then... A forecaster of criminal activities? I'm just saying. It's like Black Friday. I don't know. No, it's not Black Friday. It's fucking right. Black Friday was in November. You no, know. I'm saying for criminals. It's not... It's not... Oh, Black Friday for criminals. Very, very good. I like that little jokey. You should write that down and then don't repeat it. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> What else happened this week? I didn't do shit. No. You know what? People got mad at me. Why? Because I, I tweeted something. I, they, they, there was a, a in and out opened in Idaho, and people waited eight hours for in and out So I tweeted that that was stupid. And I, like, all I could think of is, like, how, would you wait eight, an hour, eight hours for in and out in your car? Not for that shit. That's what I said. I went away eight hours in the car. It better be a good cut of meat, and there better be pussy hair on there or something, something different that flavors it, eyebrow hair, something. Listen, Lee, I want you to, how old are you now? 35. I want you to, because you came up at a different time when I came up. When I was 35, 
it was a different fucking world. And not right now you're coming up in a world. It's so weird how everything is a fucking gimmick and you don't see it. Like Lee, we had our office, what, a hundred yards from in and out? Not even, yeah. You know, we went to the comedy store. There was one on Sunset. But I remember during the pandemic, the line I saw in and out was something you'd see for Woodstock or fucking Led Zeppelin at the Garden. I, I, I'm i not kidding you. It went from Sunset, and it went all the way to that street, the big street, and then it went all the way up to Hollywood Boulevard for a fucking cheeseburger that's small. The fries got HIV, and I'm not going to tell you that. Listen, it's it's a it's one of the better burgers out there. Yeah, the burger's great. The, it's one of the better burgers out there. But before I left, that burger was getting small. It was looking like a White Castle burger, and by now with fucking Bidenomics, that that that's non-existent. I know the prices went up like a motherfucker. You Good know, day, that's so for fact, I just always thought that it was just a tad overrated. It was always. Yeah. Had overrated, and that that was my personal opinion. You know, I'm not a hamburger guy. It's not like I'm gonna sit here with you and talk to you about my favorite cheeseburger. You know, there's so many good cheeseburgers. There really is. Fucking, I'll take you to places around here that the cheeseburgers are brilliant, brilliant. Like three or four places that the cheeseburgers are great. Do I go there every day or once a week? Not at all. Tonight's the big one, Osteria. Sixteen ninety five for a cheeseburger, and they give you a beer with French fries. Are you fucking kidding me? And it's not like a fucking McDonald burger. It's a goddamn uh, sirloin with fucking short rib. You know, these people ain't just making some walk in there on a Monday. There's ten fucking savages. That's it. There should be three hundred fucking savages in there. Yeah, you've been telling me about that since you moved there. <clears throat> so people, it's like a big gimmick, man. Like when you look at things, you're like, I lived there. I was down the block from there. I never got it. it it's like when I think the biggest disappointment is that hot dog place on La Brea. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Pink's. It, it's, it's, it's total garbage. But for people to get off a plane to go there, it breaks my heart. It breaks did you my ever, heart. Did you ever go to Sonic? I went to Sonic in uh, Tennessee. And maybe I'm getting the wrong stuff, but I remember when it opened here in Massachusetts, I was in high school, and they had to shut it down because the line was going to the highway. And I was so excited to go when I was driving cross country, and I've been, I think, two times, and each time it was gross. Like, the desserts and the drinks, I'm sure, are great, but the food, oh, it's, it's I was so excited. It's garbage. It's hot garbage. But... People, you know, I still remember when Boston Market had lines. The one in Fort Lee, New Jersey, I drove by it one day. I thought they were giving away free fucking cars. It was uh, superb, you know, the, the line. And now, look, you go to Boston Market, they're trying to give it away. <laughs> they got a fucking pale tea club, you know. It, it, life comes and goes, you know. It's too fucking confusing sometimes. That's why you go, what the fuck happened? You know what burger I do miss from L.A.? The Habit was pretty good. I like The Habit. It wasn't like, a, it wasn't amazing, but for like a fast food, sort of, it was like in between because they made it for you. I used to take my daughter to The Habit because she liked it. And they always had a specialty sandwich. And those were good. <clears throat> Their steak sandwich was good. And they had like a chicken... Mexican chicken, grilled chicken was good, too. Grilled chicken with the fucking avocado and all that shit, you know. But, yeah, you know, it's it just, I don't I saw that. I saw that eight-hour wait in Idaho. There ain't nothing going on in Idaho. So, go wait for eight fucking hours. You know what I'm saying? I got nothing against Idaho. They canceled my warrant years ago, so we're cool. I go <laughs> I want. Real quick, we got to switch over now for a word from BetterHelp. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp, like I've been talking to you. The holiday season is great. I love, I love to be with some family, but it can bring up some weird stuff. BetterHelp's online therapy can help. Whether you're having a tough time with your job, relationship, family, having a total stranger to talk to helps from time to time. 
They're not going to tell you your wife, what you said about her, or cause drama with your friends. It's totally neutral party who can help you work stuff out. Like I said, the holiday is sometimes uh, an old thorn pops up, and it don't pop up till a couple of days before, and it lurks for a couple of days after. Maybe you need to talk. Better help is there to get you started. You take a short quiz and what you're looking for in a therapist, and they'll match up. It's totally online. They got therapy through video call, phone call, or even message. Whatever works for you, better help is there. Switch therapists at any time if you're not happy with one at no additional cost. Listen, in the season of giving, give something to yourself. Take care of yourself. Stop worrying about everything else. Stop worrying about what's going on all over the world. Listen, do me a favor. Visit betterhelp.com slash Diaz today, D-I-A-Z, and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash Diaz. Ha, 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 Contact BetterHelp. You won't hear that voice ever again. <laughs> and now back to the check-in. We're back like herpes. Anyway, BetterHelp is going to help you out. These uh, next couple of weeks are always taxing. So, you know, there's no shame in calling BetterHelp. So do what you do. I'll help you out a little bit. You know, whatever. You'll save on tissues. That's it. Anyway, what's up with you, Tarzan? What are your plans for the holidays and fucking, uh, you know? Oh, it's you... gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun week. I because my mom was gone visiting uh, my brother and he he just had a daughter a year ago, so she was gone for Hanukkah. We haven't done Hanukkah yet, so we're gonna do that with uh, Athena and her kids. Then we got new uh, Christmas Eve, which I. Christmas Eve as a kid was everything for me as a Jewish guy. Cause I we got invited to a family friend, like an Italian house. And like they had someone dressed up as Santa every year. We got gifts. So Christmas Eve is going to be fun with my family. And then Christmas day will be, you know, six in the morning. I love Christmas. It's so much for, especially for a Jewish guy. Christmas is a, it's, it's so much better than Hanukkah. And it's, and I love Hanukkah, but especially as a Jewish kid growing up and you see all the Christmas shit, that's all I wanted. So, like, I wake up before the kids do. I got to be honest with you. This Christmas, I'm very fucking excited. That's awesome. I've been this excited in Christmas in a long goddamn time. And for tons of reasons. Like, it's just the last two Christmases, I haven't been settled. I didn't know the scoop. But in my mind, like, I would spend those fucking misery Christmases in L.A. And I'm, I couldn't wait to get back here to go, like, to your house at six, I go by fucking Florentines at eight o'clock. And then, you know, Florentines are gonna go to church at nine. So from there, your parents invite us all for a cocktail at 10. There's gonna have be some food, you know. I, I fucking sat there in LA and dreamt of those. And then I moved here and it's like, it's not like that anymore. People, I think the uh, my, 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 my brother, Dan Florentine, he always has a little something, you know, and you go over, it's understood. You go over there from eight to nine. Maybe he's got fucking Cavatelli. Maybe, you know, who knows? But it just, they felt emptier, like, than the ones I had in L.A. And this summer when I went to Nashville, you know, I really got to meet my nephew and my niece and, you know, my other niece. Like, I knew my older niece, but I didn't know the two younger ones. And I'm like, man, this will be great to come here for Christmas. Mercy, you know. So I'm going and I'm going to have a fucking great time. My brother Mike's coming up for the week to take care of the cat. He's going to stay here. I'm going to leave him an ounce of weed, you know, leave him Perfect. my keys. And then uh, I'll be back five days. I'm only going for five days. I'm going to try to train jujitsu in Nashville. I'm going to Try to see my man at Zany. I'm gonna try to see Jelly Roll, and the rest of the time just hang out with the girls, man. And then That's come so back fun. Here, come back here, and just prepare for 2024. We gotta drop it like it's hot. We got plans for these people. We got shit crack a liking for these motherfuckers, you know. So that's my plan. I'm sticking to it because I got no reason to lie, you know. A lot what of action you- coming up. Over the holidays, I mean, I didn't know this. There's three fucking football games on Christmas Eve. Is there really? Yeah, and I think there's wow. a game on Christmas Day. 
I haven't like, even looked. They're on Saturdays now, too. I just saw that yeah, this weekend. The next couple of weeks, man. You got the end of college football. You got pro basketball. You know, there's just a lot of shit going on, so you won't be bored. You know, listen, when you go to those family reunions, you end up watching sports anyway. Oh, yeah. There's some of the men go in one room. The kids come in. You're either watching football or golf or tennis, whatever the fuck you like. And uh, that's it. That's it's very totally non. Nice. And there's not much going on for 2024. I got a couple of fucking things I'm going to do in 2024, and part of that is just to to get to get some action going, brother. I've been in Central Jersey for three years, just uh, you know, trying to put the pieces together. Now I'm ready to percolate. I, I love it. I got a and plan I like Stan. I'm excited to see what happens, dude. Is, how does how is like Mercy feel about Christmas? Is it still big for her? No, she don't believe in Santa Claus. Well, oh, she don't. Okay, her but friends don't like, say nothing. Right. She figured it out. She went to the mom and said, "Knock it off. I ain't writing no letter to fucking Santa." It was very interesting what happened yesterday with her. Okay. I had an interesting day with my daughter yesterday. Uh, you know, we get up like at, on Sundays, we get up at 7.30, blah, blah, blah. Something happened yesterday. She got sick at church last week. So she didn't want to go to church this week. So there was really nobody around on Sunday. It was really weird. And I was here till 10, 10.30. I had breakfast with them. We were talking, bullshitting. And then I went to jujitsu, and then I came back. And I go, what's going on? They were setting up rooms upstairs because my daughter switched rooms. And they were finishing up that. And then my wife came down, and it was 2.30, and I'm sitting here watching football. I went over to Jimmy's. Oh, no, I went over to Jimmy's. And I watched the Dolphins for a little while. It wasn't even a fucking game, you know. Right playing the fucking Jets, and then I came back, and I'm like, girls, what do you guys want to do? And my wife's like, I don't know. There's not much going on. I mean, it was raining already. You know, it was starting to rain. And one of the moms had contacted me and said, do you guys want to go out to dinner? And I go, yeah, but as we're leaving, we go, yeah. She goes, oh, by the way, my daughter's not coming. I don't want to take mercy to sit with four adults. You know what I'm saying? So I go, right. leave it back here with me. But when Mercy came down, she goes, Dad, no, she goes, and my wife told her she had been in the house so fucking long. And I've been telling my wife since we moved here, my daughter's not that kid you think. She's a fucking thoroughbred. She needs a little action. TV and the computer for her doesn't cut it. And she doesn't need to do much. She don't need to do much. She just needs to. Get so. out of the house. Dog, she came down. My wife told her what was going on. And, and Mercy goes, so what am I going to do? And just broke down. She just had tears in her eyes. And she just came over and gave me a hug. And I go, you want to get the hell out of here, don't you? She goes, yeah, I have to get out of here. And I go, 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 get, go get your jacket on. You know, and I, I didn't care about the Dallas game. I wasn't even watching that piece of shit game. I got in the car. As I was getting in the car, I put her favorite music on, that little girl that performed. At the garden, Olivia Rodrigo. Right, okay. I typed it into my phone when she wasn't watching in my Apple. And then I got in the car, started it, and plugged it in. And that song came on that she liked. And she fucking, you know, she smiled. And then I took her on a ride for like 25 minutes. And all those songs came on, like the whole album she likes. It was on loud. I didn't say a fucking word to her. I just let her process because that's what she needed to do. It's like her dad. I got to get the fuck out of here in the morning. I'm the type of guy who get up and write shit and prepare for the day. And what am I going to do this week? But you know what? Talk a cheap, cocksucker. It's time to try out what you believe in. You got to get out of here. Even if it's to go around the corner and make a phone call. I, I, I When I call you, I, I'm not home. I'm gone already. I'm going, I'm going to do something, but I got to get out of the house. Even though I don't have to wait until 10, it's 9.15. I'm calling you. I got to get out of the house. I'm out of the house. I got the fruit in me. 
I got two eggs sunny side up and avocado toast. Bing, boom, get that Cuban out of the room. You know what I'm saying? And and you could just <laughs> and you could just tell that's what she needed. Like you guys didn't even go anywhere. You just were driving. Went for a ride. We're gonna go get ice cream. She didn't want to. We just kept listening to music. And what did we go do? Oh, we ended up going to Barnes and Nobles. And I don't like that Barnes and Nobles freehold because they're the ones that told me I couldn't do the book signing there. So as so I was making the right turn, if you know anything about me, I'm like, I don't even know why I'm fucking coming in here. <laughs> I even thought about just giving my daughter 20 bucks and go, go get what you need to get, whatever the fuck it is, and come back. Because I don't want to step foot in there. But I didn't want to make no problems, so I walked in there with her. And I went in there, and I even got more fucking annoyed. Because the guy, one guy was watching me like I was a shoplifter. You know, because I didn't look the best. I had a hooded sweatshirt on sweatpants. I don't give a fuck. It's coming down out here. I'm going to dress up to go to Barnes and Noble. And then look at you like that. That's crazy. He did this little fucking dude. I'm not going to I'm not going to say his racial perpetuation. He was was looking at me. He he was eyeballing me like I was a shoplifter. Came up to me. Do I need any help? Do I look like I need any fucking help? I'm standing (laughs) three feet from my daughter in the kids section of fucking Harry Potter, whatever the fuck. She got some book by Tim Burton or something. I don't know. Tim Burton wrote a movie. He's going to direct the movie. You know me. I just yes him at that. And next thing you know, I'm dropping the small 20. And my daughter's smart because she actually walks up to the counter like she's faking the money, like she's got it in, like she's going to take it out. And, and then we get to the counter. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to fucking outdo it here. What am I going to do? I just take the money out and pay for it. She always like goes like she makes. She has that, that little limp hand, you know, little guy, 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 guy. The limp hand. Did he teach her this? Or did you, it's just something that was natural? But then, as I'm paying for the fucking book, I turn around, and there's a book of fucking biographies and comedy and shit. My book was not on the fucking table. Motherfuckers. And I'm like, these motherfuckers. And I wasn't even going to ask them where it was. It didn't even matter to me. Didn't even matter to me. I don't even want to do business with those cocksuckers anymore. Anyway, I got to break real quick and drop some knowledge on you from DraftKings. Give me a minute. Hey, where you guys been? Uncle Joey here to talk to you about DraftKings. Let me tell you something. This is the week. The next two weeks is when to throw down. You got basketball. You got football all day. College. You got, what else you got? You got hockey. You got everything. Everybody's doing something. So do me a favor, but what's hot right now is the NBA. This week, new customers can score 150 instantly in bonus bets just for betting five bucks. Who's better than you and who's better than Uncle Joey for turning you on? Nobody. DraftKings, that's who. So get the party started right now. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Joey. New customers can get 150 instantly in bonus bets just for betting $5 on basketball. You know what that happens? Only on DraftKings Sportsbook when you use code Joey. The crown is yours. Now, if you got a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 8778-HOPE-NEW-YORK and text HOPE-NEW-YORK. That's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available. 888-789-7777. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino, 21 plus, Boyd in Ontario. Uh, listen, do me a favor. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use code Joey, and let's get this party started. I'm going to throw you 150 instantly in bonus bets. All right? Merry Christmas. Jingle, jingle. Back to the show. We're back, Jack. Anyway. So that's it, brother. That's my fucking story, and I'm sticking to it. I, I love it. Good weeks. I got some plans for 2024. I don't even want to tell you, Lee. I'm excited. You always have good plans. I'm excited because I got to do something. I got to do something. Even something small. I I, I got to do something. I got to put something. I'm starting a book in January. And I really thought about the conversation we had the other night. It really helped me. My conversations with you on this podcast and off the podcast are really helping me write this book. 
because I'm looking uh -huh. at the efficiencies that you had, I have another young comics app. I have a lot of young comics on Patreon and they ask me questions and it's frustration. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to know how to get to the next level. And you and I had a conversation the other day. I don't even know if you remember it. I was telling you that I'm going to write a, a chapter about the things I did wrong. Right. The things I did wrong. And I fucking wrote one that was tremendous. And it was very hard for me. And it was people always ask me, like, on the side, like, I was talking to a young comic the other day, like, at a French fry place. I was there with my daughter. I don't even, I don't even know it was a French fry place. It wasn't a French fry place. <clears throat> this was when we went to the city for the okay. concert. And the kid goes, you know, do you have any advice for a young comic? And I go, listen, I've been thinking about this for a long time. Not taping myself. Not listening to myself. Not watching awesome. my videos. I'm gonna make a confession to you, Lee. Out of all the churches we did, I saw bits and pieces on YouTube. If you thought I sat there through a podcast and watched it, never watched it. The last person I want to see is me. You know what I'm saying? Couldn't agree more. So, what are you saying? About myself. I'm, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but I think one of the biggest mistakes I made, and not being serious about it, is I know everybody's broke. I'm not expecting you to buy a fucking high-end camera. And these fucking uh, phones are 600 bucks, and you drop it with a fuck whatever. You know, they and now you got to deliver pizza for another year to get another phone, or you got to borrow a small nickel from dad. You got to hear that of your beat. You know, all you got to do is tape your sets. Just make it a habit to tape your sets, whether they're five minutes, 15 minutes, tape your fucking sets. It's something I didn't do, and if I could do it all over again from 1991, I would have done them all. Joey, why didn't you do it? Because I was so insecure about myself, I didn't want to see myself on tape. I've never watched a full special of mine on tape. I'll tell you what I have watched. Because I could, as I was doing it, I could feel it. And that was the Comedy Central things I did for Ari. Besides that, I don't watch any of that shit at all. At all. But it was such a mistake for me. And it's such a mistake for a young comic. And you're going to go, Joey, but I'm just getting started because I want you to build healthy habits. Now. I want you to know that at home, I don't want, listen, I don't give a fuck about your sexual preferences. I don't give a fuck about your drug addictions. I don't give a fuck if you stay out till six doing Molly and jumping up and down. I will tell you what I want from you as a young comic. And it's the first thing you do when you go home is wash your hands, jump in the shower, eat a pie, mom's apple pie, whatever the fuck your ritual is. But before you hit that sack, I want you to listen to that fucking tape. Make two notes, just two notes. Not negative, positive. For right now, I don't want you to go to bed upset. And then listen to it again in the morning and make your notes. And right there in the morning when you're eating your cereal, make your plans for the next night. What am I going to do different? And not even a plan. I just want you to make a note and then come back at five from work or whatever the fuck you're doing and then execute that plan for tonight or the next show, whatever the fuck that may be. That was my mistake. Because you never recorded, right? Like even later on when you had like the phone, no? When we met, you said to me one night, you want me to record your fucking set on the way down to Irvine. And next thing you know, it was the number one fucking download. You know what I'm saying? I know. That's fucking crazy that you never did. I that's recorded. I never, because of my appearance and I was so insecure, that's why I don't like fucking specials too much. I want to listen to you. For me, stand up. I want, if I listened to myself more, I would have been so much better, Lee. It's amazing you were as good as you were, and like never listening to it. You just had that. Like you just have a great memory, I think. Because I hated my voice, and I hated what I looked like. Like I didn't want to see me on stage. But there was one thing I did believe in, and what I felt like on that stage. And I'll tell you, I walked off that stage many a night going, 
I wish I would have taped that. Because I wanted to hear what my heart sounds like when I was on stage. I wanted to hear. I love hearing a glass get set. I loved those. I came up on the Richard Pryor albums and the Red Fox albums, and I could feel the heart coming through the speakers, whether I had earphones on or we were at one of my friend's house, the Specials or Sabatino, one of them, and we were listening to, I love listening to the laughter. And it was real. It was a small club. It wasn't an arena. Nobody was doing arenas. Nobody was doing comedy clubs. There was maybe a buck 20 in there, buck 50. And you heard it differently. And I always wanted to sound that way. But I knew no matter what I did, it would never sound that way. But I learned listening to the beats. I'm listening to beats. I'm listening to, you know, a beat is when somebody stops. And I'm listening to all these little things. But what I'm really listening to is his heart. That's what I could hear. I can't see it. He's a fake. He's got a bunch of tattoos. He's got a weird hairdo. He's got a scarf on. I don't want to see that. I want to hear it. Somewhere along the line, people wanted to see tape, you know? And that's where I think it's, I'm I'm an old man. I want to hear it, even though I can't hear it. But I want to hear it. I I mean, we've talked forever about how much I, I love albums. But it's, how do you think, like, how, how did you, how did you write if you weren't listening to it? You just remembered, like, the little changes you would make? Yes. Yes. Wow. I, a lot of times I would, oh, bro, one of the running jokes with uh, these fucking guys, you know, and they'll bring it up to them. The Rogans, the Aries is, Joey, did you write that down? Joey, write that down. <laughs> that was like, <laughs> you write that down. You know, what's he doing? That's a, you know, and because I knew I could come up with those once a night. I could pop those out of my ass. You know, I always knew. I, I didn't know if I was going to kill, but I knew I had one line in me that wasn't on the dialogue that I could pop. So, and now I regret all that. I threw away hours of material. Because I didn't bring it home at night, listen to it, write it down. If I was just... me and you could be driving, and it happened. I'm not making this up. You and I could be driving the car, driving to Irvine, Brea, Oxnard, wherever the fuck it was. <sighs> we go over something, we talk about this, and you go, ooh, say that joke from the ice house. And I would get in there. Practice the joke in my head, not in front of a mirror. Like, uh, I would practice it in my fucking head. And then you get there, you have a great set, and you come off, and, you, and you're like, Joey, that was a really good set. And I'm like, fuck you. I didn't say that fucking joke. Oh, yeah. That one joke was what I worked on all fucking week. That's the only thing I wanted to work. I just did a complete different set. And the thing that got me the most was that I didn't do that one fucking joke. You were there a thousand times when I got off the stage and I go like, fuck. And you go like, what happened? And I'm like, I didn't try the joke. Meanwhile, they're howling. Right. They had a great fucking time. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't try that fucking joke. That would go on for six nights. Was it just you were just in the moment? Yeah, and then I would go home. Then I would try it, and I, now, now I got a reaction. Now where am I going with this fucking beginning, right? Uh, we had this discussion last week. I don't like, I like, remember? The joke we were talking about. Right. I, I tried don't it. Like, huh? You tried it. Now you called me that night. You went crazy. You tried it twice. It worked. You call me going crazy about what? That it worked? Or what was the main concern? About where to go from there? It's the same thing. I forgot that joke. We look at things so fucking differently. Like, we people have no idea 
how pissed you get as a comic when they're telling you that was a great set. And you're like, motherfuckers, I had something up my sleeve that was going to make your eyeballs pop out. I wish I'd go back up there and do it, but I can't. You know, it's just that. Anyway, to get back to the story, I wish I would have uh, written my, got home at night, listened to my tape. I really used to get home at night, and I got to be honest with you. No matter how fucked up I was, I always remembered to go to my notebook, write down how I did, honestly, what joke I wanted to try. If I had somebody with me, I only put the parameters and I go back the next morning. But if I was alone, that's when I go through my process. I get pissed off. I get a fucking line of Coke and a drink of beer and you know, I'd, let me write this over again. Then I'd write it over again. And that went on till six in the morning. It was an excuse to snort the coke. Right. But I, it just, I like, there are sometimes I do remember things, but there's a lot of times I'll go back to listen. I don't listen to every set by any stretch of the imagination. But when I do listen, I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot I said that. So I, I was thinking about that when you said, like, oh, you threw away so much. So you definitely threw away hours. Hours. <laughs> But I knew I could, I knew I could write more. It's like a coke dealer. I knew I could sell more coke. It didn't matter what I was spending. I knew I could. I always knew that I could pop up something, especially when you get on stage every night. Once you get into that rhythm, you start popping shit every two nights. Then it's every night that you get off stage and you go, "I can't believe I fucking said that." You know, and the joke that I think about the most just to let people know, is when I do Ari's storyteller show, when we beat up the nun, mm -hmm. there's like four jokes in that thing that were nowhere on the agenda. The When I said I don't like milk, but I like milkshakes, that, that was not on the agenda. When I talked about the Puerto Rican kids, the uh, whatever brothers, Hitting them, and I go, they look like Roberto Clemente motherfuckers. <laughs> came out right there. <laughs> These are the things that will come out of you once you get on stage a lot and fucking, you know. That's it. That's all I got to say on that. I, I love, love talking it. this shit, and I could talk it for hours about different, and then you see it in other comics. I've been on, you know, I've been on stage with everybody, and I they've gotten off stage, and hey, how'd you do? Man, I had this joke I wanted to say, motherfucker, I forgot the wording. on it. And these are like top guys, you know, like they're in the game a few years. So, hey, if the video is lagging, it's because the Chinese balloon is in the neighborhood. So, you know, don't worry about nothing. The fucking uh, Internet is still tip top Magoo. But shit's happening. We've had bad weather here. Trees got knocked down. So but the heart and soul is still there. You get. You still get the voice, like a man on fire. You get the guy's voice. I caught the last 20 minutes of that the other night. Jesus Christ. I hadn't seen it in about a year. It's from the part where he makes the dude shoot himself, the Puerto Rican dude that was married to Jennifer Lopez. From there right. on, he was on a fucking rampage. And I hadn't seen that in a while. God damn. I've been catching some fucking killer movies lately by mistake, the way I like to catch them, not planned. You just turn the TV on. They're coming in like 10 minutes. Fucking tremendous movies lately. And I've still been going to bed early. You know, but I love watching like uh, I saw Man on Fire. I saw The Getaway was on the other night. I caught the last hour of that. Uh, you know, a good week with Steve McQueen, maybe the end of a Charles Bronson movie. They've been playing a movie from 84 from Charles Bronson. It's a good movie. Not really. It's not one of my favorites. A little bit too violent for me. But I caught the fucking beginning of that the other day. So he took the he threw the guy off the balcony with a fucking fire hydrant. Tremendous. You can't write that shit in the script. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't bother you to go in like with like an hour left. <clears throat> I can't watch I've movies. Like movie. movie. At this point, I can right. rewrite the fucking movie. I've seen it so many times. My point is that I haven't seen it in a long time. Right. So it's like when I told you I watched Scarface. Everybody saw Scarface. I saw it 50 times when it came out, but I had, didn't have it on for 20 fucking years. You know, the other night it was coming on. Oh, Netflix had it. And I go, let me turn this on and see what it looks like. 
it was fucking raw, still raw. So I like doing that from time to time. Nothing new's coming out. It's like you you're planning to go see no fucking movie the last next two weeks. There's really nothing. There's no Christmas movie. I think I think she's going to see Willy Wonka. Ah, how many times are you going to make a Willy Wonka fucking movie? If you're not yeah. watching the original Willy Wonka, what what, what are we doing? And I talked to her about it. I said, listen, the original Willy Wonka is the fucking Mac Daddy of Mac Daddies, but yeah, she likes Burton and this guy and that guy. So what do you want from me? I'm trying my best just to be a dad, smoke dope, and keep the lights on. You know what I'm saying? That's all you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad. <coughs> it's sad that there are no movies coming out on Christmas because that's what I, that's what I was thinking of doing too. And I just looked, and there's nothing. Nothing. You know, I always thought maybe making an investment in like a fucking movie theater, an old one, and get movies. Ten people told me you're gonna lose your shirt. Because what you got to pay to bring those movies in is fucking hella high water. So what are you going to charge? $22? You got to charge more in the movie theater because you have a smaller movie theater. AMC got oh. a parking lot. I'm talking about getting like a, a 98 seater and showing Charles Bronson weekend, Bruce Lee weekend, Lee Syatt weekend, bringing comics during the week. And you think, and that would be expensive? I thought that's the whole reason they show, had old movies at movie theaters because it was cheaper. Q and A about the movies, read that some would be shit awesome. up. Everybody join in. That's a Tuesday night club. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Wednesday play poker and have sucky fucky in the basement for some people in the community. You know what I'm saying? Get the priest in there, getting the party started and shit. <laughs> sucky fucking for the community. I went oh to the heart God. doctor in Eaton Town. Okay. And I go to this heart doctor. Like, it's a beautiful building. The neighborhood is great. But there's a little alleyway. And at the end of the alleyway, there's a little light that just blinks and says massage. I've been to this doctor six times in three years for checkups, blood work. And every time I go, I park the car close to it just to see if anybody comes out of there or whatever. It's open all the time. So finally this week, I went to the when I went that last time last week, I walked in. As soon as the doctor walked in, I looked at him. I go, Dr. I, let me ask you a question. You ever go to that massage and let somebody tickle your asshole with a feather dog? He just froze up this dude. <laughs> Nobody's ever talked to him like that. Then he closes the door and he goes, no. And he goes, but I have, <laughs> but I have thought about it. So. Holy shit. You asked your doctor yeah. that. <laughs> you gotta ask him. You gotta blow him out of this fucking whistle. You know, let him know where you stand. If not, he thinks you're an okie doke like everybody else. Oh my god, I think he might like okie dokes. I don't think he wants people to ask. Oh my god, <laughs> what would you have done if he had said yes? <laughs> what? <laughs> what would you have done if he says, "Oh yeah, I go there every Friday"? Oh, give me the code. Give me the. Give me the ten percent <laughs> off card. Give me the referral. I don't want to touch yeah. nobody. I don't want to kiss nobody. But if somebody wants to blow hot air in my ass with a, a, a straw, I'm at that age. I enjoy things like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to see you naked. I don't want to touch you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want you. But if you want to tickle my asshole with a feather for 25 minutes for the small 50, <laughs> I'm in. Uh, <laughs> how, did, how did you find out you liked it? <laughs> what happened? How did you find out you liked getting your asshole tickled with a feather? Who? You. Oh, when I was like 20, I bumped into a chick that was a pilgrim and the party started. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, oh, are you gonna do you, do you talk like this in front of your in-laws? Do you have like with your nieces and nephews? Do you fuck with them a little bit? Um the the ones in Tennessee, you know, they're Bible beaters. I love them, but I can't talk like this. And that's my nieces. I can't talk crazy. Mercy, I can talk a little crazy now. She gets it. Listen, Urban, this neighborhood talks crazy, so I don't want her to think I'm a fucking quiet boy. That's the farthest thing I am. So, uh, yeah, if it's around her friends, I go off from time to time. I love it. They, have, they must love you. And I, I I've seen off. them with you. But... I went off last night at my favorite restaurant because just fucking, every time I go in there, there's like three waiters that are sweethearts, but they always want to talk. 
And if there's music on and a TV on and the, show, the dining room is packed, I can't fucking hear you. You can talk all you want. And last night, this guy wanted to talk about Memphis. You know, I, I, I got, you know, <laughs> I've been smoking dope since after jujitsu. I think I ate a mushroom cap that looked like my toenail. I swear to God, this mushroom cap Ooh. looked just like my fungi toenail on the right foot. So I was on fire. I wasn't planning on going to the restaurant by no means, but my wife, my daughter finally goes, dad, I want to go eat something after we went for our long ride. So we went to meet the girls. Right. So he came over, you know, what are you doing for the holidays? We're going to Nashville. Oh, very nice. You know, I'm going to Memphis. Have you ever been to Memphis? What are the people like? And I go, listen, what are you talking to me for? That's my wife. She's from Tennessee. I don't know nothing. <laughs> and then, you know, I was having like three conversations at once. I'm in this fucking corner. I got Christmas music over my head. Fucking, I'm trying to watch the fucking game. I got the over in the Dallas game. It don't look like it's coming in. I, I, I don't know <laughs> what game. It was like and this guy wants to talk to me about fucking Memphis. And the whole time, I can't hear. So finally, at the end, I go, can I talk to you for a second? I go, I've been coming here for two years. <laughs> I come here. You want to give me a fucking ear beat? And I don't mind. I like everybody talking. But I want you to listen to the music. and I'm deaf. Yeah, when you come over to me sometimes, I go, don't I have a retarded look on my face? I have a sometimes. face retarded. When I, when I don't know what's going on and you come over and I'm thinking about something. Compl I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat dinner. And this guy's asking me about Memphis. And finally, I, I was like, that guy, when I come in here, talk to me. But if there's music and shit, it's hello and goodbye. I, I, I can't hear you. You want to come in here, you want directions to Memphis. We would die in a lab. I don't know how to get to Memphis. Uh, <laughs> people I have no it. idea. I'm fucking deaf. Especially when there's a lot of shit going on. I'm not going to fucking hear you. I'm not going to hear you. Would you like, wife, kind of? What's that? I said, would you like, kind of? In certain situations. <laughs> right. Like I went to therapy the other day. I almost broke my ankle just to get out of there. There was a lady, 400 pounds. All she talked about was a bad knee and how she can't, you know, <laughs> stop. You're killing me here. Get on the bike and knock it the fuck off. And this went on for hours. She had like two people over there. Well, let me tell you what happened. I'm like, come on, lady, get up. Enough with this. Your knee hurts because you sit on the couch eating entomans all day watching fucking game shows. Get up. Get on the fucking bike. Come on. Knock it off. She gave him a 20-minute speech. You know what she's gonna do? Oh, they were talking about how to fucking break into somebody's internet. I need this. I need this. I'm a convicted felon. That I, no, they they weren't fucking. Uh, you know, internets. They were saying how people are breaking into the internet. But this right. went on for thirty minutes. We didn't come here to talk about the internet. Blow. Let's go. Get on the fucking bike. Give her a roller skate. Something. You know what I'm saying? I love when that happens. I love watching you. I'm surprised you lasted 30 minutes. What's that? I'm surprised you lasted 30 minutes before you said something about it. You know, I'm becoming a fucking Christian as of short. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> can, can I ask you something? No, not I, really. Is Catholicism part of Christianity? I have people who talk. I have no idea. Listen, I don't know nothing. I know Jesus went out on Thursday. They stabbed him. <laughs> he came back on Sunday. He died for his sins. <clears throat> I know Adam and Eve ate the fucking apple, so we don't have to. We don't have to fucking. You know, if Adam wouldn't have bit the apple or Eve, everybody we would have lived in paradise. I know things like that. All right. <clears throat> this other shit. Know much about? I know about old school Catholicism without getting the finger in my ass. I was there. I lived it. I went to a Catholic grammar school. The whole fucking deal. And you know, I don't know how it all meant. I pray to one God. I don't know what color he is. You know, we're all in for a fucking surprise. So just shut the fuck up. Go to work and say your prayers and put a dollar in the basket on Sunday. You'll be fine. That's what I'll do. I love it. Merry I love Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and your family, brother. We'll talk the next couple of days and we'll keep you guys posted on Christmas or what the fuck we're going to do. But for right now, we love you. Thank you for letting us come into your home every Tuesday or your car or your fucking whatever. 
your ear pods, and thank you for being there for us the last what? Lee, wake up four. out of your coma. I'm, I, I, was, I was listening for the last four months. All right. No, we've been on the air together. Oh, well, yeah, four, to get, for us years. for about 12 years. That's crazy. Yeah. And we got surprises for you next year. So get ready, cocksucker. Stay black. And now for a word from my sponsors. The check-in is brought to you by Liquid IV. I know you savages are out there partying like unbelievable. When you need to recover fast, turn to Liquid IV. Listen, you're jumping up and down. It's Christmas. You're drinking eggnog with Staminka juice in it. You got this. You got this. You need to stay hydrated. Liquid IV gets you hydrated two times faster than water alone, and it even comes in a sugar-free. Let me tell you something. They launched three new flavors the white peach tremendous the green grape out of this world the lemon lime it's like gatorade and heat and all three of them will set you on fire after a long night of jumping up and down and doing other things you know what i'm saying i've been there but i'm not there anymore now i drink liquid iv keeps me alive in the morning you understand me after a cup of coffee i drink a little liquid iv a white peach i put that thing in it to help me out and boom, no gluten, soy, dairy, or GMOs. And no artificial sweeteners either. I don't even know what GMOs are. Sugar is replaced with an amino acid allulose blend, which has the same taste and texture of table sugar. It's tremendous. Try the white peach. It'll put you in a different dimension. You understand me? Grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier in bulk nationwide at Costco. Tremendous. They got a bunch of flavors. They even got combo packs now. So you can try a bunch of different combo packs or get 20% off when you go direct to liquidiv.com. Use code Joey. Listen, Uncle Joey's going to save you 20%. Start the 2024 with Liquid IV. You're going to love it. I'm going to give you 20% off anything you order when you shop for better hydration today using promo code Joey, J O E Y. At liquidiv.com. That's liquidiv.com. The check in is also brought to you by dun, da, 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 Factor. Listen, if you're trying to eat better in 2024, make it easy on yourself with Factor. Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service that sends chef prepared, dietitian approved meals right to your door. They take two minutes to prepare. To prepare, You just heat them up in the microwave on a skillet, and you're all set. Tip-top magoo. No waiting in line at the grocery store. No chopping, prepping, or cleaning up. Just an awesome meal right there when you want them. The thing I like about this most is, listen, half of us are on the go. We're trying to eat healthy. This is where Factor comes in. They got 35 meal options to choose from every week, so you'll have much more variety. They come vegan, vegetarian, protein plus, calorie smart meals, and you'll never skimp on flavor. Right now, head to factormeals.com slash Diaz50. That's Diaz50. Go to factormeals.com and press in code Diaz50. You ready for this? I'm going to get you 50% off. Who's better than Factor Meals? Nobody. That's Diaz50 at factormeals.com. Slash Diaz five zero to get your fifty percent off. All right, it's the holidays. Enjoy. 